Here we are in sunny West St. Leonard's. That's the beach over there. This is Electro Studios, where our big show is about to open in about an hour's time. I'm gonna give you a quick walk around and show you what's in the show. As you can see, we're not quite ready. We're finishing off the last little bits, but we're nearly there. And the show is a selection of work, some from books that we've produced over the past few years, and quite a lot of it from books that we are producing for this show. It's been a huge amount of work. But we start with Amanda Jobson. Some pictures she took a few years ago now at Hellingly, which was a, um, a hospital unit for mental health patients. Um, and has now been redeveloped into housing, but Amanda spent quite a long period of time there photographing the derelict building, but also talking to people who had worked there. And we did a book with her a few years ago called The Cuckoo Trail, um, just before the pandemic. Um, and this show is really a chance for that book to have a proper launch because it got a bit lost in the COVID pandemic, and it's a great book. Next to Amanda, we have Alexander Bretel, uh, a very small selection from his series Two Lamp Posts. This was one of the very first books we did. I think it was number two, four, nearly five years ago now. These are beautiful dark room prints from that series. Next to those, some photographs by Guy Beatty, who lives in, in Germany, from his book A Death Foretold, which again got a bit lost in the pandemic, but post-pandemic, as we come out of the pandemic, it feels like a very prescient book, full of um, a sense of anxiety, I guess, but really beautiful black and white photographs. Next to Guy, Caitlin Locke, All the Fun of the Boot Fair, a very different kind of mood, colourful, full of humour, the traditional British car boot fair, um, and she's captured it really wonderfully. And this is a book we released last year, um, but it's so nice to see the work on the wall. And then over the other side of the gallery, keeping with the colour theme, we have Julian Anderson, Portrait of a Garden. This is the, a new book that we're releasing for the show. Julian spent at least a year in um, a very major garden, photographing it through the seasons really beautifully, full of colour and structure and texture and also some really lovely darkroom prints of some of the tools used in the garden. Next to Julian, another new book, Rod Morris, What You Left Behind. Rod is a filmmaker as well as a photographer and you can tell by looking at his pictures they are very filmic stills from an imagined film is the way I think of them. These are beautiful darkroom prints. He's, as well as being a really good photographer, Rod is a really excellent printer and these are lovely to see. The book is very substantial. It's, uh, I can't remember how many photos we ended up choosing, but it was hard to edit. So it's a big book. But it's nice to see some of the original prints on the wall and Rod will be down here to speak tomorrow, Saturday the 14th, and he will bring some more prints for people to see. Moving into this room at the back, we have Anne Lydiat, Antarctica, the presence of absence. Anne has spent a lot of time traveling both in the North and South polar regions. And these are a selection of pictures from some of her travels. And this is a book we did two or three years ago now. But again, it's really nice to see these pictures on the wall, those beautiful muted colors very stark, striking combination of nature and the industrial world. And next to Anne, Paul Thomas. Paul is the publisher of Silver Hill Press. He's a printer, he prints all of the books we produce, but he's also a really accomplished photographer. <clears throat> and this series, Dad's Garage, is another new book we're putting out this week. And it's Paul's photographs of his father's uh, bric-a-brac tools, collections from his garage. His dad was a real hoarder, an inveterate hoarder, craftsman, DIY odd job kind of person. And these are really beautiful pictures that kind of sum up 
his interests, his hobbies, his obsessions and his life. Really nice to see those on the wall. And into the back we have Stuart Griffiths, Albania before the collapse. In the early, well, mid-1990s, 1996, I think, Stuart went to Albania a year before the Albanian Civil War to photograph. And some of these pictures were used, I know, in the press at the time. I think, if I'm right, this one here was the first press byline that Stuart received. But a lot of these pictures have not been seen since they were made. And it's a fantastic collection, full of, well, as you would imagine, Albania in the mid-90s, probably not um, a land entirely of milk and honey, but I think you have a great combination here of some very austere, stark pictures of a country with a lot of poverty and problems, but also people with their humanity and their warmth and Stuart has captured all of that. I think this is a fantastic book and again on the wall you get a real sense of the different facets that, uh, that Stuart managed to capture of Albanian life at that time. And then this couldn't be more different, Peter Quinnell a thousand and one wonderful things. Every day during lockdown, Peter made a collage. Now these are actually double-sided. There's a collage on the other side of every single one of these. So if you buy one, you get one free, as Peter says. They are hilarious. Some of them are quite sinister. Um, for example, down here we have a new exciting way to kill swans. But they are amazing. The consistency of Peter's vision, the humour. This is, I think, my favourite. This one, our Trev, mystical, infallible child prodigy, ingenious, amazing, next to, have you seen Captain Hornet? And there are many more in this box. And Peter has also made prints of lots of these. You can either, if you come to the show, you can either buy an original collage or a print. So that's downstairs. We also have an upstairs. So I'm going to walk you around to the upstairs. At the moment, the door is locked. But I will have to unlock it and take you around. So bear with me while I do this. Outside we go. It is a really lovely day today. The sun is shining. It's still a bit of a chilly wind, but I think it's going to be a perfect weekend to come and see a photography show. Just turn that light on. to the far end of this corridor first and we're going to start at the far end. When the show opens the end we're walking to will be the start end for this floor. And we'll start at this end with Malcolm Glover. Uh, Malcolm spent a long time in the early 80s in Wales photographing he studied at Newport under David Hearn, and these are his photos from the Hluin Peninsula in northwest Wales from the very early 80s. Um, the whole sequence we're releasing as a book, um, I think there's over 80 pictures in the selection we've made. Malcolm has printed 17 of them. These are his own darkroom prints made very recently from the original negatives. They are beautiful prints. And it's amazing to see them. 
up close. And again, they're full of Malcolm's trademark humanity and warmth. He's really good at photographing people. You can tell how engaged he is with their lives. This is, I think, an important book with some fantastic pictures. Very pleased to have this on the wall. Next to Malcolm, well, this is me, Ian Land. This is a series of diptyches. This is only part of the whole sequence, a sequence called Not Dark Yet. Um, these were taken through the winter of 2020, the winter of lockdown. Um, a time that I remember as being really difficult and it was hard to maintain much optimism. It was really before vaccinations en masse, before we all felt safe where the death rate was very high and the winter was very grey and long but despite all of that I'm hoping the pictures have some optimism they're not just relentlessly gloomy I hope uh, anyway so that's part of my series I have done a book of these there's only 30 copies um, it's not something I wanted to do as a, a proper big production, um, but there are copies available at the gallery if you would like one. And then finally we have 14 months of solitude. You may have seen this at Electro Studios very briefly at the turn of the year this year. Um, it was shown for just one weekend I think. And I went to see it and I really liked it and I talked to the photographers involved and suggested that this would make a perfect book and so it has become a book. This is Lawrence Morgan Griffiths, oh sorry, Loris Morgan Griffiths, sorry Loris, Alexander Brattel, John Cole and James Robert Shaw and it's called 14 Months of Solitude. So during 14 months of lockdown the four photographers essentially did a call and response. So one would take a picture, pass it on to the second, who would pass their picture on to the third, who would pass their picture on to the fourth. So each set of four images in this long sequence is taken by a different photographer. There is some anonymity here, and deliberately so, so you don't know when you're looking at it who took what, but each one of these sequences of four is a response. And I think it works really well, both as an idea and as an exhibition and hopefully as a book. So there we are, that is the Silver Hill Press Presents show. I hope you can make it down. So the opening is Saturday, March the 14th. We are open today, but today is really a, a final finishing up day. So tomorrow, Saturday the 14th, we have talks at one o'clock, two o'clock and three o'clock. Malcolm Glover, Rod Morris and Caitlin Locke are all speaking about their work. And then from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. is the private view. Although it's called a private view, everybody is welcome. Um, and then on Sunday, the 15th, Anne Lydia is speaking about Antarctica at 3 p.m. And then we're open on Monday. And again, the next Friday. And then the next big event is Saturday, May the 21st, where we have a day of poetry readings, music, uh, all kinds of things happening. Um, not just visual art. And then on Sunday the 22nd we have a closing party. And the closing party is the launch of Silver Hill Press zines. So we produced, this is largely the work of our designer Richard de Passando. Um, and we're, we're doing smaller scale stapled zines rather than books. They're made on a different basis to the books, they're sold on a different basis to the books. The first set that we've done are incredibly diverse. Uh, we've done, made zines with Sadie Hennessy, Kate Halpin, John Moore, Dave Valentine, Dave Wares, who's made two zines, and Richard de Passando himself. Um, and they're, as I say, incredibly diverse series of zines. It's hard to summarise what, they, what they're about. They're not, there's not one single theme to any of them. Um, 
So come along to the show, have a look, buy some books. We'll be offering special deals. If you buy five books, you get a discount. Um, but mostly it'll be great to see you. Um, we've had over two years now of COVID lockdowns and all sorts of you know, difficulties with people socialising. This is a nice, big, airy, open space. Feel confident and comfortable coming along. The weekend is going to be beautiful. The weather is going to be sunny and warm. It's an excuse to wander onto the beach, maybe have an ice cream at the cafe opposite, soak up some sun, see some photography and some art, and meet some interesting people. Thanks for watching.